Okay, I'm doing just that now. Thank you, sir. All right. If you um, if you look at the natural world, you will see that the the landscape of things have changed. You know, the landscape of things have changed. You know, the way of doing business is changing. You know, um, in the finance world, you know, things are changing. These are changes that the world up until now have resisted or before now had resisted and thought it wasn't going to be possible, thought it wasn't going to work, you know, thought it wasn't going to, you know, you know, I, 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 I remember some times ago, you know, I was having a conversation with a couple of people and I said, um, I just, you know, threw that as a question, you know, rather as a research and assignment. I said, go and um, study the history of how the first paper money, the first paper money was um, discovered and introduced. As a matter of fact, go and find out where it was first discovered. You know, the first paper money. You'll be shocked. <laughs> that was not even in Europe, not even in America. <laughs> it was in Asia. The first paper money. You see, and when it was going to be introduced in other part of the world, you need to see the fight people put up to resist it, to say no, it will never work. You know, they, the rest of the wanted to continue to go with the the is it the the coins of gold, coins of silver. They resisted it. They say, you know, and you know what even that made it very bad is the pride, the fact that it's not even the innovation is not coming from their country; it's coming from you know, one country somewhere, you know, <clears throat> in, you know, as it were, remote Asia and all of that. Anyways, now what, what I'm saying is the landscape of things have changed in case you are not aware. Things have changed. Things have changed. And what makes it further interesting is that for believers, to occupy the positions. Listen very carefully, folks. For believers to occupy the positions, God wants them to occupy, all right? Believers need to be proactive. You see, over the years, over the centuries, God has you know, afforded believers, the church, the opportunity to be at the forefront, you see, um, of championing or stewarding or administrating or having some level of oversight, oversight over the, you know, the, the expanding, you know, civilization that humanity was coming into. You see, to some extent, because to some extent, because the church wasn't ready, the church, you know, the church those times thought of the world. You know, those days you sing, take the whole world, give me Jesus. The world had, the church rather, had a myopic, all right, misinterpreted scriptural, you know, scriptural misinterpretations, you know, of what is referred to as the world. You know, because of, you know, that state, the church was not readily on ground to take its place, to occupy its place of stewardship, of administration, or spiritual oversight. Hence why, when these civilization and innovations, all right, became stewarded by those who didn't know God, all right, the fact that they didn't know God and they were instrumental in advancing these things, made many of them to become further drawn away from God. They became, that was one of the ways that self became solidly entrenched. You know, that was one of the ways that those were the building block for what you refer to today as humanism. You know, faith in self. You see, faith in self that does not know God, that does not acknowledge God. 
You see, if you look at Bible time, if you look at Bible time, now Bible time, you would see that at the height of many of the innovations that you see recorded in scriptures, where people at the height, at the top of these innovations, were a people that were in covenant with God. You see, people who were in covenant with God, you know, had some level of oversight. You see, people who were in covenant with God had some level of, of innovative leadership. People who were in covenant with God had some level of creative pioneering. You see, as far as the civilization of the different era, you know, the different times of their day. You see, but in a whole lot of ways, it has become, you know, it has become apparent that the way believers now have now interpreted what we today call the New Testament is at the detriment of the spiritual responsibility of the church in what today is referred to as the secular. Because what is today referred to as the secular, most people in the church today now refer to it as the world. So you now see believers carrying a mindset of not wanting to have anything to do with the secular. You see, And people use all kinds of um, excuses. You know, they use all kinds of excuses. Now, one of the excuses of note that many believers use to support that position is the fact that um, the apostles in the epistles did not speak, did not speak about that explicitly in the epistles. You see, failing to realize that in as much as what is written in the epistles, all right, is the Old Testament explained, all right, we must also understand that the epistles are neither complete without the Old Testament. You see, I'll repeat that again. In as much we teach it, we declare it, that the New Testament is the Old Testament explained or is the Old Testament fulfilled. We must also realize that the New Testament is not complete without the Old Testament. Because if you read the epistles very carefully, you will see that why there are a whole lot of things that are explained from the Old Testament in the New Testament, there are still a whole lot of things that are in the Old Testament that are not, as it were, fully explained, fully explained in the New Testament, even though they are touched, you know, they are touched, but not fully explained. You see, this is so important. This is so important that we understand this. This is so important that we understand this. <clears throat> So we're going to be looking at a couple of things today.
Now, <clears throat> we we'll called we we'll call this um, um, particular session. Um, we called it um, kingdom architecture, heart capital, attitude. Then first to fourth dimensional operations. First to fourth dimensional operations. Now the operations they ought to have been plural, right? So it's first to fourth dimensional operations. All right. So please, I, I want to implore us to, to pay very close attention, please. We are not just having this meeting just to have, just to while away another time online, you know, because, you know, <laughs> it doesn't cost anything to come online. No, it costs so much <laughs> to come online. It costs time, it costs energy, it takes a lot of effort <laughs> to come online, you know, particularly when you're having to be talking to people whose faces you are not seeing. <laughs> Man, you're just kidding. <laughs> I've gotten used to that a long time ago. Just kidding about that. All right, but I'm saying it costs so much on your part to, to, to have, you know, you know, put a pulse on whatever it is you are doing and, you know, um, 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 you know, wake up very early or to, to stay up late, for some persons, it is late, you know, night. For them, it's midnight. Some persons, it's so, it costs, it's costing everyone so much to come online. But so please, we want everyone to be fully, you know, alive. You know, fully, you know, to participate in this fully. Fully. We're not interested in wasting time. We're not interested in speaking English. You know, no. We're not interested in that. All right. <clears throat> so it's important it's important that um like i was saying earlier that we understand that the times we are living in now demands that believers in Christ Jesus become more proactive. I'm telling you, believers need to become more proactive. Believers need to become more, you know, involved, more engaged, all right? The participation level of believers, all right? need to come to a whole new level. Is it gone at those days where, you know, believers just, you know, um, just um, want God to just bless the works of their hand, you know? You know, just want God to just bless them, just let their businesses just thrive and just prosper without knowing knowing the way, you know, the scripture is a popular scripture we all refer to, you know, everywhere, you know, where in Psalms, you know, it is said that God had his ways revealed to Moses. All right. But all that the rest of the people, you know, were exposed to was his acts. You see, you see, the, the, the original rendering of that scripture, all right, it's not that God showed the children of Israel his acts. No, that was what they wanted. That was what they wanted to see. You see, God's invitation to his ways was to every one of them. You see, 
God's invitation to his ways was to everyone. It wasn't to just Moses. It was to every one of them. All right. Of course, you know the story. So it wasn't that God reserved the exclusive right of, you know, knowing his ways to only Moses. No, it was an invitation to everyone, to everyone, you know, to everyone, to everyone. So becoming partners with God, becoming partners with God. Now we're laying some very important foundation as it regards to business, as it regards to entrepreneurial, you know, initiatives. You see, you must think like this. You see, this is not, we've dealt with this, all right, but maybe I'll just touch up on, on it a little bit. This is not about you surviving, all right? This is not you about trying to make ends meet. No. This is not you about trying to make ends meet. This is not you about trying to get rich. You see, this is about you becoming a partner with God. And we've said before, being partners with God is not just something you say at the beginning of business. You know what people do when they want to start a business, they, they you know, in quotes, in quotes, they say they want to dedicate it to God. <laughs> you know, let's not even go into that. Say they want to dedicate it to God, you know, let God, you know, you know, this kind of, no, no, that, 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 that's not just it. That's not just, just it. It is not just what you do at the beginning, you know, that is called the dedication. You know, it's not just what you do. It's not just the prayers that you, no, 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 no. See, you must understand, as far as the kingdom is concerned, you see, as far as the kingdom is concerned, you see, if you are not living out of the overflow of the kingdom in your life, if you are not living out of the overflow of the revelation understanding of what the kingdom is, of how the kingdom works, of what the purposes of the kingdom are. You see, it doesn't matter how many prayer you pray, you know, to, you know, surrender the business to God, to give the business over to God. Yes, you may get some level of blessings in terms of financial increase and financial open doors, but you see, it will never go beyond that. It will never go beyond that. You see, it will never go beyond that. The kind of entrepreneurial involvement, you see, the kind of entrepreneurial participation God is marking in this time, you see, are the kind that are, number one, are going to be tools in God's hands. You see, because one of the expression, one of the, you know, posture, all right, or expression, one of the stance, you see, that expresses the position of the kingdom today, all right, is, is warfare. Do you understand? Is warfare. That is one of the current position. It is warfare. And what that means, and what that means is that there is a clash, there is a deluge, all right, going on. You see, there is a clash, there is a deluge. You see, there is some kind of warfare. You see, so what the father wants is not just people who are into something that is just um, survivor based. No, you yourself must be in that mode of warfare. Your, your mental attitude, you see, your mental attitude, that is what we basically mean when we use phrases like kingdom advancement, the encroachment of the kingdom, the infiltration of the kingdom. Now, for years, people have been concerned about the encroachment of darkness. No, no. Darkness
darkness should be the one that is weary. Darkness should be the one who is on the guard. You see, darkness should be the one who is on the watch. You see, in regards to the encroachment, in regards to the invasion, in regards to the advancement of the kingdom of God. That is what it has always been. All right? That is what has always been. From the days of um, 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 the first man, Adam, from the days of his you know, sons, Abel and Cain, all right, to the days of Seth, you see, to the days of Enoch and Noah and Abraham, you see, Isaac and Jacob, it has always been the advancement of the kingdom. It has always been the advancement of the kingdom. As a matter of fact, that is one of the core purposes that the um, positioning of the first man was given to fulfill. All right, the first man was given. The first man was given. All right, that position to. The first man was given that position to, you know, fulfill the advancement. Because don't forget, if, you, if some of us who have listened to some of the series we've done, you know, I think um, some two years back, you know, we actually stopped those series some two years back. We are going to resume them. We, we said we're going to resume some of those series this year. All right. We still felt um, some foundations were still necessary to be laid. All right. So we look forward to you know, how things begin to open up, you know, um, in the last quarter of this year, you know, in the last quarter of this year, 2020, the, according to the Gregorian calendar, into the beginning of the year 2021, the Gregorian calendar, you know. So if some of us have, you know, listened to some of the series we've done three years ago, four years ago, where we even went as far as putting up diagrams, when I was putting up diagrams, you know, um, representing, using diagrams to represent the particular subsphere, we use the, the word subsphere, the particular subsphere, you know, um, that fell out of darkness, that was once under the, you know, governance, governmental oversight of the morning star called Lucifer, you see, and how that, um, you know, God recreated as it were a tiny, tiny, a tiny little part in that subsphere that was completely drowned in the darkness that was an expression of the perversion that had occurred in that morning star, recreated a tiny part, all right, and demanded for man. Now, God didn't put man in that tiny part. God did not put man on that tiny part called earth. Where God put man, the first man, was in Eden, all right? Now, the responsibility man was given was after that God had recreated a tiny part. That is God sowing a seed of beauty and excellence in that mass, all right, of disarray and disorder and darkness. God now gave man the responsibility of taking that tiny little part, which was a standard of beauty, which was a standard of beauty, okay? Which was a standard of beauty and perfection, okay? And God, God's instruction, the summary of all of those instructions you see in chapter one of Genesis was for man to take that tiny <clears throat> standard of beauty and perfection and cause it to be multiplied. All right, we've explained this many times. All right, so you need to get it. If you still hold on to that view that God was telling man to multiply, if you still hold on, hold on to that view that God was telling man to, to be fruitful, God was telling man to, to replenish, you know, you need to change that view. All right, God wasn't telling man to multiply. God was not telling man to replenish. No, rather, God was giving man 
the responsibility of causing the earth, causing this tiny, you know, you know, a, a, a signature of divine beauty and excellence to be multiplied across the darkness. You see, across the darkness, across the 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 disarray, across the disorderliness. All right, until there will be no darkness any longer, until there will be no disorder any longer, until there will be no disarray any longer. That responsibility was given to man. All right, that responsibility is what you see captured, all right, in verse 20, 28 and 29. You see, when God, you know what people, most people call the dominion mandate. Yes, which is true. It is the dominion mandate, all right, that captures man's responsibility. Man's, it's not a blessing. God was not blessing man by saying be fruitful. No, that is the rendering that you see most popularly in the New King James translation. God was not blessing man. God was assigning man. God was giving man assignment. You see, you need to have been there. Man was not all excited. You know, do we get excited at blessings? Man was receiving that commissioning to responsibility with utmost gravity, with utmost sense of responsibility. He wasn't excited. It's not blessings. No. So, you know, so, you know, gone are those days where we, you know, we hold them, um, we hold them, um, 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 you know, you know, ceremony of, you know, matrimony, where we are joining um, two persons who are coming together to be one. And we read that scripture. That scripture is not a wedding scripture. <laughs> it's not a wedding scripture. If the couple as singles have not been taught and not already manifesting that responsibility, marriage is not going to help them manifest that responsibility. Do you understand that? Marriage never helps anybody to manifest that responsibility. If he was never taught that and now helped by understanding, revelation understanding, to begin to manifest that responsibility while he was a single brother, while she was a single sister, all right, right in the middle of what is called the secular, all right, marriage will never make him fulfill it. Marriage will never. So it's a scripture we should never be reading in our marriage ceremonies anymore. All right. So you see, so we, we use diagrams, you know, that's like three years ago, you know, to represent some of these things. All right. We use diagram to represent some of these things. Now, It's important that we understand this. You see, it's important. So the first man knew, the first man knew that he had been given responsibility, all right? He has been given responsibility that would demand a stance in a lot of ways that is suggestive of warfare. Now, not a warfare of picking up a sword and going against Satan, but a warfare posture of advancing you see, under the government of God, a warfare posture of advancing the intent of the Lord, a warfare posture of advancing the desires, of advancing the palpableness, you see, of the government of God, the palpableness of the righteousness of God. You see, it is warfare because there is a darkness to be pushed against. So the kind of warfare I'm describing is not you, you know, fighting. No, 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 no. It is warfare because there is an opposition. The presence of darkness is proof of opposition. So, and the responsibility of advancing the kingdom, all right, will require, all right, that there must be a push. There must need be a push. 
there must need be a push. They, they, that means it is suggestive that there are obstacles. There are obstacles. You see, there are hurdles. You see, and you know, it is also suggestive. The, war, the fact that it is warfare stance is also suggestive that the adversary, who is the perpetrator, all right, who is the progenitor of the darkness that is to be pushed against, that is to be advanced into, is also an intelligent creature. Even though his intelligence, all right, is nothing to write home about as long as it is God's wisdom that is informing our, 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 our strategies, all right? His wisdom, his intelligence rather, all right, doesn't come close. <laughs> doesn't come close. You know, doesn't come close. You understand that? But it is warfare, all right, in that the adversary is intelligent. You see, he was, you see, he was, or should I say, is still a morning star, but a fallen one. He's still a morning star, but a fallen one. You see, a fallen one. And one of the ways that he would, you know, fight at you, all right, is not to bring, you know, things, no, no, no. The strongest way that he will bring, the strongest way with which he will resist you, the strongest way with which he would attack you, all right, is to use the power of suggestion, you see, to bring the wisdom of this war to you. Do you see how he brought down the first man? It was not the usual, you know, shot them arrow in the dream <laughs> and they woke up and couldn't stand again on their left leg. No, that was, see, how Satan, <clears throat> how Satan, you know, met against the first man, all right, is a perfect example of the highest warfare all right, he will ever bring against any person. You see, that is a perfect picture of Satan's highest warfare. And that is why you see him replicate it again, even with Jesus. That is Satan's highest warfare. It is not possessing somebody and, you know, those kind of things you see, you know, you know and say, who are you? You say, I'm Lucifer. No, no, that is not Satan's strongest strategy. That is not Satan's strongest strategy. The highest warfare Satan unleashes against the purposes of God is what you see in Genesis 3 and what you see in Matthew 4 and Matthew Luke, I mean, and Luke 4. Matthew 4 and Luke 4. That is what you see. That is what you see. Where the prince of this world brings the wisdom, brings the wisdom of this world to you as an offering. <laughs> Do you understand? Where he brings the wisdom of this world to you, you see, as an offering, he will bring you offerings. You know, for some of you who don't know how to collect offerings, <laughs> he will school you <laughs> on how to collect offering. This is not offering from men, offering from... <laughs> from from the prince <laughs> oh glory to god you know, i just it just brings to mind what what the scripture says you know in the temptation of jesus you know when the bible says that um he said he took him to a very high mountain we'll explain that to the mountain is not a physical you know um uh, 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 rock somewhere no the word high mountain speaks about the throne from whence he oversees the world. The high mountain there in Matthew 4, in Luke 4, is not a physical rock somewhere in Jerusalem. All right. Rather, the high mountain there speaks about the throne, all right, from whence he rules as the prince of this world. That could have been, that is the only place from whence Jesus could have seen all of the glories of the kingdoms of the world. All of the glories. That is from whence, it is from that seat Satan, 
is able to see all of the glories of the kingdoms of the world, the world, all right? The world, not the cosmos, not the eternities of God, all right? But the aeon, the aeon, then of course, all of the different, you know, paraphernalia that are, you know, woven into it. But it is first the aeon, it is first the aeon, all right? Then, you know, clustered, you know, with, um, with the different now physical, you know, system of human government that have, like scripture puts in Revelation, that have drank, you see, of its cup of wisdom. That have drank of its cup of wisdom. You remember chapter, in the book of Revelation when it was about Babylon, you see. So, but that high mountain he took Jesus to is the seat from when Satan exerts himself as the prince of this world. It is, it is that seat scripture is referring to in Ephesians 2, when he refers to him as the prince of the power of the air. Power of the air, there has nothing to do with airwaves. I've seen some people interpret it as airwaves. It's not airwaves. Power, the prince of the power of the air has nothing to do with airwaves. You see, it has nothing to do with airwaves. It has nothing to do with uh, the upper part of the earth. No. The height from when Satan ruled the aeon is not, is not the physical height. You see, it is not a, a, a physical height. Do you understand that? It is not a physical height. It's important that we understand that. It is not a physical height. So the one of the reasons why we believe that is because we have undermined, all right, either as a result of um, a misunderstanding or you know a lack of knowledge of the true, you know, um, um, extent of authority Lucifer had. You see, because it's important to be able to understand. Now, to do that, we've done that in the previous teaching, you need to get them, all right? But to do that is not to glorify Satan. To do that helps the believer to know the extent of dark influence Satan has over the world. Like, what do you think? Don't you think Apostle John knew for him to have said in 1 John 5? He said, we know that the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. He knew what he was talking about. And he knew the extent. Then number two, to know the extent will help you know, all right, how Lucifer's fall was able to bring down alongside with him other, you know, other, you know, princes, other creatures, living creatures. You know, we've dealt with that in previous teachings. Yes. All right. I'm sorry. I'm just being told that... Um, we haven't turned on the mix around. So please, um, if you wanted to connect via message, don't just stay, just stay online, just stay, stay via Zoom. Maybe we'll consider that in the second session later on today. All right. Please. I was just told. All right. I was just told. We expect that. I understand, but we expect that everybody should be able to, you know, prepare for this meeting. So we don't want um, the you know, and usually it's not too convenient for me. I'm having to look at the mix around on my phone, having to, you know. All right, so sorry about that. Maybe we'll do that, do that in the next session. All right, so you see, um, so you see, it's important that we understand this. It's important that we understand this. You know, the level of authority Satan had. See, that was one of the one of the reasons why we did the teaching series on 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 morning stars. You know, on morning stars, it was during that teaching we were able to define and locate Satan's extent of authority. You see, we we're able to cut him to size and see that he is not as powerful as most people in the church, or should I say as many people in the church, all right, have taught him to be, all right? Even though he had a level of authority, all right, but he's not as powerful. You see, he's, he didn't have as much influence that has been ascribed to him by men in the church. All right, and when we look at the 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 cadre of authority he had, we have defined him as a one-face cherub. 
He was not even a two-faced cherub, neither was he even a four-faced cherub. You see? He was just a one-faced cherub. So as a one-faced cherub, he was never the personal guardian. He was never the personal guardian of the glory of God. You see? And the four living creatures with four faces, all right, that are at the throne, all right, manifested at the throne of God, are not an afterthought after Satan had fallen. They have been there. You see, in fact, those four living creatures, listen, were created before Satan. They were created, <coughs> excuse me, they were created before Satan. So when Satan, you see, I'm just touching it. When Satan fell, Michael did not pick up a sword, you know, to defend God's truth. Michael didn't do that. Do you understand? First, God does not deserve, or rather, God cannot be defended. All right? And if at all God needs defense, all right? <laughs> First of all, do you know who the do you know who the 24 elders are? You see, maybe get some of these teachings, folks. Get some of these teachings. See, as an entrepreneur, see, the number one weaponry you need to have in your arsenal is revelation. Gone are those days when people are entrepreneur, Christian entrepreneur, but no, no, no jack about, about truth. They know everything about economics, about finance, about stocks, about shares. All right? Then they'll come late for Christian meetings, come late for prayer meetings. You see? And, you know, and, 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 you know, those days, come late for Sunday school meetings. And they have this mindset, don't worry, our job is to go and bring the money and sponsor the gospel. <laughs> Such people, go and read about them. Such people, their businesses are being clamped now. <laughs> Those days are gone. Those days are gone. Do you understand? Those days are gone. The number one weapon you need to have in your arsenal, you see, is revelation. You know the way people go to business schools? And pay how much now? Pay a thousand, two thousand, five thousand dollars just to attend a business school. You know, probably after you've done your BSc, you've had your first degree or your second degree, you go and do, you know. See, you know, people have undermined the 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 reality, all right, the tangibleness, you see, of of kingdom realities. I'm telling you. People who you see believers, you know, attend such business schools, some even have to relocate to live around where the schools are, right? Live around there, get a new apartment, live around there to attend the business schools. Do you understand that? Now, when you now organize kingdom meetings, they will come, they will stroll in. You see, they will stroll in, they will come in late. You see, and when they come in late, they get the recordings. You see people still struggling to hear previous recording. You know, sometimes I get people ask me questions and I'm, and I'm like, but we've dealt with them in the previous days. Eh, I have them, but I've not listened to them. I've not listened to them. Say, so why? Listen to them. You didn't pay for this recording. Listen to it. I tell people, <clears throat> the only price you have to pay, <clears throat> the only price you have to pay for the recording is the time that it will cost you to listen to them. That's the only money. That's the only currency you pay for it. You didn't pay for it. You know, you, you use your data, yes, you know, to download them. Listen. You say you have them. They're listening to them. What's the use of having them? You're not going to listen to them. Listen to them. Listen to them. Some say it's too long. It's too long. <laughs> oh dear Jesus. It is well. Then you should have, you should have, you should have, you should have been around during Jesus' time on earth. You should have been around. Mm. That is the only thing I wish. It's a wish that can't come to. <laughs> you know, 
you should have been around when Jesus was on earth. You know, people thought Jesus was one wimpy, you know, you know, you know, because of a lot of people didn't realize that many of the things Jesus taught that as recorded, for example, by Matthew, they were just summarized. For example, what people believe to be, what people refer to today as um, the Sermon on the Mount. People thought the way Matthew, for example, you know, recorded them is exactly the same way Jesus preached them. Blessed. Or is it blessed? <laughs> blessed are, the, are those that hunger. All right. For what? For they shall be what? So he was just preaching like that. Now, he, that was how he was preaching. <laughs> Have you ever thought about how he was able to keep the first one, 5,000, right? Men. There were women there. There were children there. You know, you know those kind of things. Women have always had the greater propensity to being anything God. You understand what I mean by that now? You know, you know what I mean by that. So, in other words, there were more women there than they were. And we've explained the reason why the women were not numbered. All right. They lived in a day and time when they were being ruled by the Romans, where it was forbidden, all right, to count women. During periods of census, it was forbidden for women to be counted. Women were not counted. Women were not counted. You see, that gives you a background to what Paul said, you know, what Paul said about women not speaking. You know, this is something we've also dealt with. Women not speaking. Even though most people today have taken it, you know, completely off track. They've built their own idol and they've called it a doctrine of Christ. It is an idol of man. And actually, it is an idol of men who have not, according to the scripture, studied to show themselves, approved unto God. You see? Because they've not studied the show and proven to God, they have what? Rather than what? Rightly dividing the word of truth, they have wrongly divided the word of truth. So there were women there. There were children there. At least it was from a lad, scripture says, a young boy, that, that the, the, the meal that was multiplied was gotten from. You see, trust, you, do you, do you? Women loved Jesus. Women loved Jesus. So there was no way Jesus would, would have gone to that women would not be there. Do you understand? <laughs> women love Jesus. So you understand that. So it tells you 5,000 besides women and children. Besides. Besides. Then the second time went to 7,000. It said besides women and children. So what was he teaching that would have made him keep that, that large crowd? in a desert, in a region of the earth that is known to have too extreme um, um, temperature. During the day, all right, the, the temperature is, is extreme, it's too hot. At night, the temperature is extreme, it's too cold. You see? All right. So let's not lose the talk. Back to what we're saying. Now, so you see, it's important to understand that. It's important to understand that. Now, that, that, that's one of the reasons, as a matter of fact, when you look around, you will see how Satan is furnishing those who are pledging allegiance to him, all right, dark wisdom. You see? And it is this dark wisdom that is making... Many of those who are legends to him, making them to become very audacious in their position, all right? Very audacious in their prediction. Can you, can you imagine such, such audaciousness, all right? In their prediction of what the world, of the direction in which the world will go. The direction in which the world will go. We are seeing people not just talking. They're not just talking. They are talking after they've mastered it to a degree 
all right? Certain operationality of the wisdom, the wisdom of the God of this world. That's why you look at many of these people, they are not even ashamed to let the world know that they are a spiritual people anymore. And yet you see lots of supposed Christian people who are ashamed to show how spiritual they are. Now, I'm not saying how religious they are. Many Christians will prefer to show how religious. Religiosity and spirituality are not the same thing. <laughs> They're not the same thing. <laughs> They're not the same thing. You know, they're not the same thing. You see, religiosity thrives on ignorance, pure ignorance. A lot of things people do in the name of being spiritual that is religious is ignorance. All right? Spirituality is, is based on finesse. Did you hear what I said? It's based on intelligence, spiritual intelligence. You see, an intelligence, it costs time, it costs effort. Nobody just attains spirituality without you know investing time. You see, nobody does. Nobody does without investing time. Somebody doesn't just wake up and say, No, you must have invested time to receive revelation understanding, to receive, to practice. It takes time. When you look at those people in the dark, that they, they come out now, they are talking. No, they didn't just come out now to start talking. They were in, they've been investing. Check some of their, go and read about some of them. They will tell you, years ago when they were quiet, that you were thinking, you know, they were trending. They were doing so much in the background. They were harnessing skills. So now they're not talking. It has taken them years to not come out and talk. But you see, a Christian man, a Christian man wants to start today. He wants to start this morning. Eh? Then start talking in the evening. Start expecting manifestation in the evening. A Christian man. That's a lazy Christian man. That's a lazy Christian man. Spirituality requires attention. <coughs> Religiosity does not require attention. <coughs> Excuse me. Religiosity, all right, thrives, listen carefully. I'm not being, I'm just saying it the way it is. Religiosity thrives on absent-mindedness. Because it takes paying attention to detail for spirituality to thrive. I'm telling you. So when you see, when you see somebody teaching, teaching scripture wrongly, all right, that is religiosity. Because it takes time to do what? To study scripture, to look at it painstakingly. Look at it without avoiding any detail. But religiosity will do otherwise. And when it does otherwise, all right, it will want to kill everybody that does not agree with it. You see, spiritual, let's say spirituality is based on finesse. It is based, it is built on intelligence. It is built on proficiency, on skill. And all of this, all right, take time. All of this take, require diligence. Diligence. One of the ways we define diligence is constant effort. Constant unbroken. Constant unbroken effort. Constant unbroken effort constant not just something you start middle of the week then you break 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 the transmission two days after then resume two weeks after constant unbroken you know effort all right that's why you look at the scripture and you see eggs examples in scriptures of true spirituality all right you will see all of these factors you see or you see all of these traits all right in their lives you see all of these traits in their lives you see all of these traits in their lives
You see? Because you see, uh, okay, maybe we'll return to that. All right, we'll return to that. Now, <clears throat> the greatest currency is in Kevin. The greatest currency that man was given, was given, and that man is eventually returning to the utilization of, all right, is the heart. That reality is dawning upon humanity. That reality is dawning upon humanity everywhere. Humanity everywhere is returning to that realization. You see? Humanity is returning to that realization. The realization that the currency, all right, with which to transact for the future, the currency with which to create, with which to expand <clears throat> the spheres, the boundaries of civilization, with which to expand the experience of one's future is the heart. That is what you are seeing. And that is what you are seeing that is driving, all right, the creation of man everywhere. I'm telling you, everywhere. Man is touching it gradually. You see, humanity is touching it gradually. Now, the, the ends, of the world for humanity, listen carefully, is not even AI. Listen carefully. What you call AI, all right, is a preparation ground to unleash, to unleash eh, the potentiality of the heart of man. Do you understand that? You see, this is one of the reasons why it is careful to not subject Bible interpretation to man's current engagement. Some persons are already calling AI the beast. They're already calling it the mark of the beast and all those kind of things. No, no, no. And we've seen these clues in scriptures. All right, we've seen the repeated emphasis on phrases such as as it was in the beginning, as it was in the beginning, as it was in the beginning. <clears throat> Even in the days, you know, after the fall of the first man, you see, the tool with which man built the cities, the civilizations that they built was with their heart. You see, the city of Babel was going to be built with the heart. That is the reason for the emphasis there that says, all right, that says that God said, for that which they have imagined to do. It is in the power of the heart. What they were going to use to create that city was the heart. You see, more on that later. So what man is currently doing, all right, with AI is just test running. It's just test running. All right. The main folks who are at the core of these things, they know what they are doing. You know, you know, most people just like to do band, they don't like to join the bandwagon. The main folks know what they are doing. 
they know what they are doing. For example, now this is not um, an eschatology meeting, but just mention a couple of things. For example, there are what we may refer to dark as dark places of the earth, where the creation, the where the creation of human being by man has not only been carried out, but has been perfected. Do you understand that? The creation of human being by men, not in a human in a, in a woman's womb, all right, but in laboratories, it has not only been completed, it has been perfected. They've perfected that. They're not using AI <laughs> as an emissary. You understand? They know that you see, well. All right. <laughs> okay. Let's come back here. Now. So I was saying that the number one weaponry every believer, every believer, you see, every believer, all right, who is um, who has the responsibility of representing God who has had hatched in his heart both the conviction and the vision of you know seeing the influence of god seeing the the kingdom and government of god all right advanced in the different you know sector of the economy or industries that he or she may find all right his or herself all right must have the number one weapon so believer must have all right is revelation understanding revelation understanding and as a matter of fact every christian needs to have revelation understanding because every christian all right actually is an entrepreneur all right now the word entrepreneur or entrepreneur may not have been used in scripture in the exact words in the exact modern use of that word all right but it's important to understand that the responsibility the first man was given the responsibility all right we're called dominion mandate is actually an entrepreneurial responsibility it's important that we understand this you see an entrepreneur is not just someone who has his own business in fact there are some persons who are working in an office that are more entrepreneurial you see in in attitude all right than people who have their own businesses people who run their own you know business you see and we see those examples replicated or exemplified as well in the life of Joseph. Joseph was a slave and he was in Potiphar's house. Potiphar's house as a slave, not as a worker. He wasn't there working for salary. He was a, not just a servant, he was a slave. He was bought. You see, and the scripture says that God blessed Potiphar's house because of Joseph. You see, meaning that was things multiplied. There was increase. There was multiplication. There was prosperity. You see, there was an experience of security. You see, things stopped dying. Things just didn't die in his care. All right? There was multiplication of profits. You see, 
there were no losses recorded. You see, that is entrepreneurial. You see, that is being entrepreneurial. So you, you read through the scriptures, you see the same examples. So that's one of the reasons why we say that every believer has an entrepreneurial spirit. You see, every believer does. You, you need to understand that first. Every believer does. It is not when you now start a business of your own that you are now an entrepreneur. No. 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 If you are working somewhere, you see, and while you are there, there is no increase. You see, as a result of the infiltration of the influence of God, as a result of the you know manifestation of God's wisdom, all right, then you are not entrepreneur in any way. Then you will never be. Do you understand? That is why you've seen many supposed entrepreneurs start at something that refused to fly 10 years after. Because you see, it takes time to nurture an entrepreneurial spirit. Do you understand that? It takes time because you see, what is received from God must be nurtured. It doesn't just manifest because you received it. It must be nurtured. So, one of the reasons why God puts you somewhere is to give an opportunity to nurture that thing that is in you. Now, of course, in the kingdom, it's not called entrepreneurial. In the kingdom, it's called stewardship. You see, in the kingdom, it's called administra administration. You see, in the kingdom, it is an expression of your participation in the government of God. All right? It is in quotes, Earth men that call it entrepreneur. Entrepreneur or entrepreneur is an earth language. You see, and most people, what most earth people think of being entrepreneur is starting your own business, growing it. In the kingdom, and what you call entrepreneur, which is called what? Stewardship there, all right? Is responsibility. Responsibility that does not have your own increase. That does not have your own prosperity in view, but that has what the advance, the encroachment of the kingdom in view. Do you see? Look at how David now in Psalm 107. Look at how David explains. Look at how he explains the assignment over Joseph's life. He said, God, in order to preserve Israel, what did he do? He sent Joseph ahead of them. Do you understand that? So Joseph was used by God. He was an instrument. So it was not only about Joseph. As a matter of fact, in order of priority, it was more about who? About Israel. It was more about Israel. Yes, did Joseph prosper while he was in Egypt? Yes. He married there, had children there, he ruled. But all of the things he enjoyed, all right, wasn't the thing. That was just, you know, privileges that comes with what? With stewardship. With stewardship. With stewardship. That's which the father had his eye upon. You see, that's which the father had his eye upon, all right, was the preservation of Israel. You see, and going beyond Israel as a nation, that's which the father was working on protecting his what? His salvation, right? Don't forget, you know, his salvation. Because the, 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 the Godhead was going to manifest through that nation, was going to become flesh, you see, through that, as it were, lineage. So it was first salvation, then Israel as a nation, all right, then Joseph as an individual. So you can see it cuts across. So that is why we say you don't truly see the complete picture from your own perspective. You don't truly see the complete picture. You don't truly see the complete picture. 
So it's, it's never about you. It's never about an individual. It's about the complete purpose of God, all right? Which one single person cannot, you know, fulfill. You can only fulfill the portion that has been marked out for you. And heeding to such <coughs> leadings of God. Heeding to such directions of God, all right, is one of the ways we find ourselves, all right, expressing the dominion mandate. Find ourselves expressing the dominion mandate. You see, the dominion mandate, all right, did not go into extinction because the first man, you know, um, 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 you know, um, um, you know, yielded to the lies of Satan. No, the dominion mandate is still in, in force. As a matter of fact, the dominion mandate will be carried out by the church. You see, will be carried out by the church. That is why when you look at the book of Revelations, the book of Revelations chapter 21, all right, that talks about the new heaven and the new earth, all right, for the old heavens and the old, heaven, old earth are no more. You see, the materialization of the new heavens and the new earth is by the church is by the church no it's not going to be by god an assignment god gives all right to you he will never do it god will never do it even if you don't do it he won't do it he will just commission to somebody else that's what god does an assignment he gives to you he will never do it even if you fail and you refuse to do it, he won't do it. He'll just bring in somebody else to come and do it. You see? So, the responsibility of causing the beauty, the standard of beauty and excellence that God had, you know, brought forth in the midst of the in the midst of the darkness and called man into the responsibility of advancing it, expanding it. You see, God gave it to man and God is not collecting it back. God is not going to say, okay, man did it, so let me do it. He won't do that. It is the responsibility of the new creation. All right? In the order of who? The last Adam. It is the responsibility. It is the responsibility. Now, listen. Listen. This is one of the reasons why work, please listen carefully. This is one of the reasons why work is very spiritual. You see, many of those, um, you know, Christian brother who think work is a uh, canal. <laughs> this is one of the reasons why work is very spiritual. This is one of the reasons why there is nothing like secular. What is called secular was defined by people, some persons, you know, we've talked about that, you know, the, the plateau of this world, the Socrates, this, these guys. No, that was not a definition that was brought forth under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. You see, that is the reason why the, the best example we can use to capture, you know, to capture this is when we talk about them. All right, is is um is um the culture of the Jews, the culture of the Jews. While listen, you know, while the old covenant was yet standing, <laughs> do you understand? While the old covenant was yet standing, you know, there was there was a way that the law was in a way that gave them a perspective, all right, about life or a perspective of life as a single unit, as a single, you know, reality. That perspective was given to them by the law. God, you know, infused that perspective, you know, to them through the law. So viewing life, through the law. That's why you look at the law. When you look at the law, you know, the law is not just 10 commandments. I hope you know that. 
the law is not just ten commandments all right the law had in it commandments had in it ordinances had in it what statutes and what you understand that so the ten commandments the ten commandments is just part of the commandments that is inside the law there are more commandments than ten I hope you're listening. There are more commandments than 10. The average believer just think of the last 10 commandments. No, sir. No, sir. There are more in the commandment segment of the law. There are more commandments than 10. In the same way you have what? The same law having ordinances. Having, now, when you put all of this together, making up the law, that is why when you look at the law, the law addressed every, in quote, area of life without segregating them. You see? The law addressed every area of life without segregating them. Now, that was one of the ways that the law impacted into them, all right, a lesser, singular, you know, perspective all right, as to what life is, which in turn made it impossible for the Jews to think of life as being different. Did you still understand spiritual life and marital life, uh, financial life and uh, what else now? Uh, academic life, then what else? Uh, business life and what? And health life. You know those, that's a monster. That was a monster created by the Greeks. Do you understand that? It's a monster created by the Greeks. That is a pity. Many people in the church, in particular, be Pentecostal, charismatic. With, with, with. That is why, as that is why, in spite of the revelation many Christians have received, as long as that definition is still at the root of their hearts, it doesn't matter how much of God's word they receive. They are not able to do well in the secular. Go and check what I've said. If the word of God received does not delete from the foundation, from the core of their being. That false definition, it doesn't matter how much of God's word they receive. They will hardly, they will hardly come into generational wealth responsibility. Do you understand? Check it. Check, go and check. Check believers. Check how many believers, all right, are in custodianship of wealth, all right, for the last five generations. Go and check. That was the reason why other false misinterpretation of scriptures could thrive. It could thrive because what the foundation for that, for where that heresy was run had already been laid. That foundation was that monster created by the Greeks. <clears throat> All right. All right. Um, I think um, we're going to make some concentrations now and um, bringing this session to a close. <laughs> yes, we will. Um, we will be coming back online. We'll be coming back online at about 5 p.m. plus one GMT, all right? Plus one GMT, yes. Uh, some people want to know, let's go on, let's go on. Yeah, I'm also, con I'm considering everyone. I'm considering everyone. You know, I know there are some persons who are listening at about past midnight, so, you know, and they've had a busy Friday, so they have to stay up to listen to this, you know, looking at that too. So, you know, we'll give them the privilege of resting and some of us too, you know, do some, but the evening sessions will stretch, all right? The evening session or the second session will stretch. So we have the time to go relax, but of course we, it's, it's, a, it's a now session and a later session, you know, so, um, um, so these are just something to reflect upon. While you sleep, sleep well, all right? <laughs> While you rest, rest well. All right, contemplate on this as you rest. 
contemplate on this and let this infuse into your night visions. Let this infuse into your night time. Let it, let it infuse into your dreams. All right? You know, and let it, you know, let the Lord use it to, to recalibrate, to reconfigure what needs to be reconfigured in our minds, in our hearts. All right. So see you again. See you again at um, in the next couple of hours. All right. In the next couple of hours, um, 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 5 p.m. plus one GMT. Grace to you. Grace to you.